Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. My dear students, welcome to our third meeting. Today we have uh, to, our, to our class speaking skills. Uh, for our second class, we are going to cover um, some uh, skills or spoken skills. How to ask for and understand and give directions. You know, the directions to turn right, go turn, uh, turn right, turn left, go straight, go back, okay, come across. These are all directions, north, west, east, and south, and so on. And then we will be aware also of the tone of our voices. How can you understand the situation according to the tone of your voices? Okay. And then we will also discuss how to communicate when using public transportation. Whether you are in an airport, on the streets, whether you want to ride a bi, a bi you know, uh, to rent a bicycle or a car. And then we have a kind of a short conversation between a person and a landlord or you know apartment uh, apartment managers uh, during also our class we will have a look at you know speech reductions the speak reductions we want to understand it what do we mean by reduction uh, and how the american uses the reduction in their speeches and then we have some group of vocabularies. I want you to memorize them, okay? And uh, I hope you know you use them in different situations so you can keep them in mind. Uh, in the last, uh, I will in, uh, 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 finally I will let you know about the homeworks that I want you to to do it at home. First of all, when you ask for or uh, for directions, or for, if you want to give directions. Actually, you're going to use the following words like words like across the street. This is how to give a direction. And for example, down the street, next to, which means beside, around the corner, and in front of, and behind, or in back of. If you look at this diagram, well, and I ask you, for example, the, where is the post office? It's right here. This is a post office. And I ask you, where is the post office? You can say that the post office is across the street from the bank. Hadi ma'na across the street. Hina, right here. So cross the street from the bank. Here is the bank. For example, if I've told you uh, uh, where is the bakery, for example. Here is the bakery, right? In the diagram. You can say that the bakery is down the street from the post office. Is down the street from the Hadahua. Down the street from the office. The post office. This is what I mean down the street. Okay, here's across the street and here's the down street. For example, where is the laundromat? The laundromat is right here. The laundromat is next to the grocery store. Next to Bijanib or beside. Where is the drug store? The drug store is around the corner at the whole corner is around the corner from the laundromat. Where is this, uh, a bus stop? Is there a bus stop? Yes, a bus stop. Where is it? Okay. The bus stop in front of the library. Here is the library and here is the parking lot, which is the bus stop. Parking lot, the home of a siyarat, a mark of siyarat. And so on. So you need to and understand these, actually, uh, I can't call them prepositions, or direction prepositions. Okay, the directions. Cross the street, down the street, next to, around, in the front, and behind. This diagram will help you actually to understand the exact meaning of these directions. 
Well, the language of direction. When you give a direction to someone, if someone stops you, stops you and, and asks you about uh, one place, you, you're going to use these direction words like go straight, see that? Turn right, turn left, and here's some of the, if you want to say, turn right north, for example. Here is the north, Chanel, and east, and west, and south. Here's northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest. Okay, so all of these are the directions. Um, for example, if you passed the bank, you should go, you, you go past the bank. So you go past the bank. You go down Main Street. Or uh, you, can, uh, you can say, walk two blocks, two streets. You should pass two streets. So this is the language of giving directions. I just provided you to of these, uh, you know, directions to remind you. I know they are very simple, but it's a good, uh, uh, it's a good time to remind you of these simple things. Well, usually, in your conversation, in the street, in the airport, uh, well, anywhere, um, you should ask some questions. How to get. Um, you know, a direction, how to ask for a direction. So here we have like uh, five to six, um, you know, phrases or common expressions that you may use to ask for a direction. So uh, any conversation regarding direction should include or consist of these main expressions. For example, how do you get to the bank? How do you get to to the bank? Could you tell me where is the, where the bank is? Is the bank far from here? I'm looking for a bank. I'm trying to find a bank. In what direction is a bank? So all of these, you know, types of equations, different type of equations, they are all heading to ask. asking for a direction conversation. So I want you now to pretend that you are two persons and just make a short conversation, small talk between yourself and yourself. So you ask first yourself how to how do do you want to get to one place in your country? And then you, yourself, you can answer it. And try to imitate the audios that we are going to hear. Well, before we're getting ready to listening, I prefer to remind you of some of the, uh, some of the vocabularies that you may know. If you don't know them, so please memorize them because the, these are um, basic, you know, vocabularies for specialists like you, English specialists. So for each expression on the left here, you know, find the expression on the right with the same meaning. Write these letters, or its letters on the line. For example, uh, uh, when you stop someone, you don't call him, hey, hey, stop, no. Actually, what you do is, excuse me, right? To pay his attention or her attention, you will say, excuse me. That's why excuse me is a very important one. So, excuse me means, pardon me, B. It's pardon me. They have the same meaning. Okay? So, we, we widely use this expression. So, you want to use them in your conversation. Otherwise, your conversation is going to be impolite. Okay? Number two, to transfer. To transfer some money. 
that is to change, okay? To change some money. And that's number D, actually, letter D. Dollar bills. You know the dollar bills? The paper money, okay? The dollar bills, the dollar. The warqi. Exact change. Change a uh, correct amount of coins. Change manaha baqay al mal or dollar. مثل السنس القرش أو الهلالة. so exact change means paper money and that to go no sorry correct amount of coins which is C exact means correct amount okay so all of these expressions you are in need of these expressions so please memorize them. Excuse me. Okay. No. So in here, in listening to, we're going to discuss something about tone of voice. In here, sout, nabrata sout, nabrata sout. Now I want you to be aware of tone of voice. Tone of voice. Tone of voice refers to how a voice sounds, not just the words a person uses, either the way you the way you sound. For example, someone um, he might be angry, so his voice will be angry. Someone who is polite, so his voice is going to be polite, slow. Someone who is in hurry, for example, musajil, so his voice is going to be hurrying. Okay, musajil. So, an understanding tone of voice can help you better understand what people mean. For instance, the tone of a message may be friendly, even if the words are not friendly. Okay? Sometimes, for example, you get zero in your exam, for example. And you told your parents, your father and mother, about the grade. Dad or mom, I got zero. So you, Dad, will use some unfriendly words, but in a polite way, because he wants to teach you, okay, or she wants to teach you. Okay, so it's helpful to listen to people's tones of voice, because sometimes their voices tell more than their words. Well, these, these are all a theory, you know, this is kind of an explanation of what, what, we, what we should do. But now we are going to apply this strategy. Okay, we are going to apply it. So let us listen here. So we have here a kind of a conversation between two persons and uh, Mr. William and the uh, driver. In this conversation, Mr. William asked the driver some directions. He asking for some directions. And I want you to notice if this driver, taxi driver, was a friendly driver or unfriendly driver conversation. And I need you, I want you to hear, to listen actually, to listen carefully. Then we have a question, what does William, okay, we will answer these questions while we are hearing the, uh, the audio. Okay, is CD number one, track number ten. Okay, so now the question is, was this conversation a friendly conversation or unfriendly?
can polite conversation or impolite well this conversation it seems polite friendly why this driver was polite because he gives full answer mr william ask him about a uh, the bus to gary street right so he was asking about how to transfer to gary street so he gave him the driver gave mr william a full answer and his the driver tone was slow it was slow clear so his tone was slow and clear again at the end the driver in this conversation with have a good day have a good day do you remember the use of this word the use of this phrase in the last class remember we have used have a good day have a nice day have a nice weekend so the driver was polite why because of all these reasons he gives he gives a full answer his tone was slow and clear and he said and he ends the conversation with have a good day okay number question number two what does William need to take to 7th and Lake Street in your computer you can repeat the audio I tikrar had the video and listen to it again so what does William need to take to 7th and Lake Streets the answer you will find it the 30 and the 38 where does he transfer he transfers to Gary streets Gary streets okay I prefer to listen to it again okay let us listen to it again Excellent. So we have heard this uh, audio twice, and I want you to do it three times at your office, in your home, and do it again and again and answer the questions. Just be sure that these answers are correct. Let us now listen to conversation number two. And I have the same question Is the driver conversation friendly or unfriendly? And how much does it cost to take the bus? كم بتكلف؟ 85 cents, 1 dollars, and 85 cents. And what does William need? It's the same conversation between William, William, but with another driver. Okay, let us listen. Okay, was the driver polite or impolite? Actually, this conversation was impolite, unfriendly. Why it was unfriendly? Because the driver gives short answers. Do you know what I mean by short and long answers or full answers? For example, if I ask you a question, What's your name? You said Muhammad. This is impolite way to respond, to answer. You should say, my name 
is Muhammad. And this is a more polite way. Same here in this conversation. The driver gives short answer. So this is impolite way to speak with the people. You should give full and long answer. Okay, so that was unfriendly. Again, the driver also ends this conversation without saying, have a good day. He said, move to the back. Move to the back. So instead, instead of saying, have a good day, he said, move to the back. Okay? And this is impolite way, unfriendly way. So this is why this driver conversations with William was unfriendly. Again, how much does it cost? This is number two, question number two. How much does it cost to take the bus? He said, 85 cents. 85 cents. What does William need? William need a dollar bill or he wanted exact change right or a dollar bill then he wants a dollar bill okay let us listen to this conversation again So again, he said, move to the back. So this is impolite way to end a conversation, especially with customers, with the people. Okay, so uh, at your home, again, do the same exercise, listen to it three times, and then answer the questions, the same questions. Well, here, I want you to work with a partner, with yourself maybe. I want you to be a student A, who wants to take the bus and suit it be at the same time who is a bus driver and have just a conversation with yourself and follow this model follow this model well right here for example I will do it by myself I'm number A now I'm a student and B is a driver excuse me does this bus go to the bank no you need you need bus number 10. Where do I get to the bank? You get to... Where do I get? You get to the bank street. How much does it cost? It cost $80. Wow, it's expensive. Thanks. Have a good day. So, well, it's not $30. Actually, it's 80 cents or 30 cents, whatever. Uh, well, $30 is... Uh, you know, very, very expensive one. So at your home now, or at your office, it's very simple, you know, it's just a short conversation. I want you to practice it, to, to just to remember what we have, well, what we have um, uh, heard in, in the last two conversations, and just do the same, okay? Well, here we have another conversation, as I told you, between a Susan and apartment managers or landlords, I don't know. Oh, it's apartments manager. Okay. So this, uh, um, this conversation, Susan starts with the following. I'm going to be both. So just listen to the way I'm speaking. Okay. Oh, what a big apartment. Again, here, between the two parentheses, this is called parentheses. Bain Qawseen. You can use anyone. You can use any of the three. So you can say, oh, what a sunny apartment. What a lovely apartment. Okay? They are all have this, almost the same, you know, feeling. It's a positive feeling. 
Oh, what a big apartment, Mr. Wiss. Yes, it's a beautiful. Okay, it's a beautiful. What a nice kitchen, what a nice clean kitchen. The oven looks in you. Right, and there is also lots of storage space. Susan, is there a security guard? Mr. Whist, Miss Whist, yes, there is a security guard. And there is a cable television too, or a recreation area too. Is there a school, a library, park nearby? Mr. Wills, of course, and there is bus stop, grocery store, hospital, right down the street. Susan, I hope there is a fireplace or conditioning, a good view. There is. This is a great, terrific, wonderful apartment. So, and did you see how I made that sort con short conversation between the Susan and the apartment manager? Well, at home, you, 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 you can, you know, guess the meaning of all these words. You know, the oven, stove, refrigerator, thalaja, wal-furin, wal-ghaz, garage, al huwa al-karaj, swimming pool, security guard, al-hirhimayi wal-amin, tennis court, recreation area, cable television, school, library, park, al al park, yani, مكان للممشى أو غيرها. بس استاد غرسي ستار هاسبيتال فاير بليس اير كونديشن اند جود فيو اند وات ايفر. جريت تريفيك وندرفول. اول اوف ذيس ار ريلي انترستينج فوكابيوريز. اي ادفايس يو تو ميمورايز ذيم اند يوز ذيم ان يور كونفرزيشن. سي ذا كونفرزيشن از نوت ذات ماتش لونج از سم اوف يو ماي ثينك. اتس جست لايك a long conversation may maybe 10 sentences this is a long one and it take only a minute sorry a, maybe two minutes three minutes at most and some and I want you to look at the my tone of voice I was really happy because I'm having a good apartment Susan looks happy because she's she's she she finds the her, uh, you know, her apartment, her great apartment. So her tone of voice is going to be bright, okay? So again, at home you can do the same conversation. You just be Miss West or Susan and try to imitate the language. Try to live the language, okay? To live by the language. And use your facial expressions, you're, you know, like be happy, not sad, not normal. Just be happy because you find a good apartment. Okay, here we have listening number three, reporting problems. How to make a complaint. For example, if you have a problem in your electricity system or in, in the water, you know, you want, you want just to call the water service and, you know, tell them about or report a problem about it. So here the situation has the same uh, the same th uh, topic is reporting problems. The situation is after a few months, Susan, so it could be she lives in an apartment, right? A new apartment, has some trouble with her new apartment. She calls Miss Swiss to complain. So I want you now to complain, to report a problem. Listen now to the, to the conversation and check the problems she reports. Which problem she reports? Let us go together to CD1. Okay. And track 11.
So again, that was a, a good, a nice conversation between uh, Susan and Miss West. Actually, Susan reports her, you know, complaints to Miss so, uh, West. Her first complaint was the air conditioning uh, was not working very well. It's hot there over there. So, Mr. So West was very nice. She told Susan that she's going to call the repairs. Repairs, repairs, and that's to fix the air conditioning. And then Susan reports her second complaint. She said that her neighbors were too noisy because they are playing a high and noisy music day and night. So Miss West told her that she, ca Susan, if they, uh, she will, uh, that Miss West will call neighbors and tell them not to do it, not to play music in a high volume, or. Susan can report her complaint to the police. So these are the two complaints, the two troubles, the two troubles that Susan have, has had during her resi first residency in the apartment. Okay? So again, I have looked for some Q words. For example, I have heard in the audio words like air conditioning. I've heard something about the neighbors, and that's why I put chick on number three and number six. She, she, Susan has never mentioned something about the garbage, or the roof, or the food, or the water. So her problem was, or the freezer, her problem was with two things, the neighbors and the air conditioning. So please, listen to this CD, or to this track 11, again, and do the same thing. Let us move on. Okay, the side of it. Understanding reductions. And Americans, by the way, and the British people, they use reductions a lot in their spoken life, in their speech. So, some of you may say, wow, they speak so fast. Why do they speak so fast? Well, the Americans and the British speakers, they use the reduction skills. So, for instance, instead of saying, one, two, I want to go to school. Americans say, and British, I want to go to school. I want to go to school. I want to, I want to go to school. Okay? So, I'm going to the cinema. I'm gonna go to the cinema. So I'm going now to support to provide you with a chart of reduction. How the reduction happens in their uh, speech. So learning to understand reductions will help you become a better listener. Okay. Listen now to the following examples of reductions form. The conversation, uh, so these reductions from the conversation in this chapter. Well, be, before now, we were looking, let me just look it up right here. Again, so that was an introduction, the one I just said. Now, look at the chart and listen to the audio. And tell me, for example, where is the long form and the short form? So, the long form right here, do you have any pets? You, in the American accent, we say, 
مش do you do you have هيك ممكن تحكي انجليزي صراع مش do you have any pets do you have do you yeah yeah instead of you yeah so do you have do you have any pets So, we are used to say, what's your name? Oh, what is your name? Lacking in the American accent, you say, what's your name? What's your name? Mush, what's your name? Lacking again, you need to know, the short forms are not correct in writing. To speak fast in English, you need to say these reductions. So, what's your name? هذا النورمال اللي بنحكيها احنا لكن in their accent what's your name what's your name okay so here what's your name here what's your name okay listen to the third one so the long form does this bus Go to Geary. Go to Geary Street. Now, if you want to make a reduction, then go to should be gotta. Does this bus gotta Geary Street? Gotta, gotta, gotta. Okay. So, does this bus gotta Geary Street? Okay. Let us listen to the, the fourth one. So the long form for one two, do you want to th to see the kitchen? Do you want to see the kitchen? To make it short, do you want to see the kitchen? Wanna instead of one two. Do you want to see the kitchen? The last one, you have to have exact change. Have to should be have to. So you have to have exact change. Okay, you do it by yourself right here. Um, here, uh, this is a kind of homework. I want you to do it at home. So please listen to these sentences. It is in CD1, track 1213, and I want you to hear the reduction. It's just exactly the same like the previous one. The slide that we gave you. So for the long, check long form and short form as you listen, and you will hear each sentence two times. Okay, so do it at home. Do it. Here is kind of a vocabulary match, uh, which definition the right match uh, matches the word in the left. For example, opportunities, it means possibilities and chances to do something. To look down on someone, it means to think badly of someone. Respected, it means admired. Please memorize them. You should memorize all of these words. Here in uh, listening for getting main idea CD1 track 14. So in this section, we are going to hear an opinion about the American lifestyle and the mobility of Americans pillar candidates, an immigrant to California and former teacher from an American school in her country. I want you to listen and then tell whether these sentences are true or false. It's actually in CD1 and track 14. If we go to track 14, you will find the following.
Okay, thank you for listening for this conversation. I left number two for you, by the way. I want to see if she's planning to go to her country, Britain. So she, in short, said, compared the American lifestyle with the British one, and she said that for the, a poor person in America, he can become a rich man if he works hard. Thank you so much for listening, and I want you, before, before leaving, to do all of these homeworks. These homeworks, we have already done it in this class. Just repeat them. Karriruhum. Ilaminahum fi hadal slide. Shukran jazeelan. Assalamu alaikum.